Sometimes, the discoveries made by archaeologists are so incredible that we can't believe what we see with our own eyes. There are occasions when the archaeologists can't believe what they see either. What they find seems too amazing to be real. Every discovery you're about to see in this video matches that description. They're stunning finds, but they're real, and they have amazing stories to tell. The history of religion in Europe is long and complicated, with many different faiths practiced in different places across thousands of years. Every time we think we've got the full story, a discovery is made that changes the facts. Take this burial site in southern France, for example. The faces of all three skeletons are pointed towards Mecca, clearly identifying them as Muslim burials. That doesn't fit with the established history of Islamic history in the area. Muslim graves dating back to the 12th and 13th centuries have been found in places like Marseille and Montpellier before, but radiocarbon dating has confirmed that these men were buried during the 8th century, making them the oldest known Muslim graves in the whole country. It's known that Muslims lived in various places along the Iberian Peninsula during that era, but until now, it wasn't thought that they'd traveled north of the Pyrenees mountain range. Analysis of DNA taken from the graves suggests that the men either came from North Africa or were descended from people born in that region. They might have belonged to the Umayyad army, a Berber force that conquered much of southwest Europe during the 8th century. You don't have to be an archaeologist to make a valuable historical discovery. Sometimes the inquiring mind of a child is all that's needed to shed new light on the distant past. In 2006, a kindergarten class was playing in their schoolyard in saint laurent Meadow, France, when they dug up fragments of bone. Their alarmed teachers immediately called in the experts, who made the amazing discovery that the kindergarten was built on top of a 5,600-year-old burial mound. A full excavation of the site revealed the presence of 30 human bodies buried over a period of more than 2,000 years, beginning in the Neolithic era and ending in the Iron Age. The fact that a select few individuals were buried in the same otherwise unremarkable place over so many centuries is a puzzle that experts so far haven't been able to solve. The humble collection of grave goods found alongside the remains, including metal tools, ceramics, and animal bones, implies that they were normal everyday people. The site must have had some kind of significance during ancient times, but historians are at a loss to explain what that significance might have been. We're staying in southern France for a moment because it's a hot spot for incredible archaeological discoveries. Finding a burial mound is one thing, but finding an entire, long-lost ancient Roman city is quite another. Nevertheless, that's what happened in 2017 when archaeologists unearthed the ruins of the city of Usitia. The city's existence was previously only known because of inscriptions found in the ruins of another neighboring ancient Roman city. Work at the site is slow, but thus far, experts have located a series of beautiful mosaics that date back to a time earlier than the Roman conquest of France, which occurred over 2,000 years ago. The remains of buildings around the mosaics suggests that the city remained standing until the Middle Ages, before either being abandoned or destroyed during the 7th century. Elaborate mosaic pavements of the kind we see here were common in the Roman world during the 1st and 2nd centuries but these examples are about 200 years older, raising the possibility that this is the place where the tradition began. Now that we've found Usidia, our next job is to find out more about how its people lived. That might take a while. We're moving across France to Laveau, close to Troyes, where a tomb discovered in 2015 continues to baffle historians to this day. The lavish tomb, which was found undisturbed and full of gold and silver ornaments, is of a style typically associated with male Celtic burials. The skeleton inside it, however, is female. The opulent nature of the tomb, along with the solid gold bracelets and torque that were found still attached to the skeleton, has led experts to believe that this might be the final resting place of a Celtic princess or queen, laid to rest with her chariot and worldly possessions approximately 2,500 years ago. The burial of a monarch or member of the ruling elite inside a chariot is a well-known Celtic tradition, but it was typically reserved for the men of the society. Whoever this woman was, she must have been extremely important. 
a sword still in its sheath, was found at the skeleton's side. As this is typically the mark of a warrior, it might mean that she won the respect of her male peers as a warrior queen and was buried with honors that wouldn't normally have been afforded to her. We're leaving France now to head to Egypt in search of the answer to an ancient mystery. In almost every ancient culture in the world, there are accounts of humans interacting with giants. Those stories are usually viewed as myths, but perhaps we can find a better explanation by studying the remains of King Sanakht, a third dynasty pharaoh who ruled Egypt around 4,700 years ago. His remains were found inside a tomb close to Beit Kalaf in 1901 and are remarkable because of their size. Based on his skeleton, the pharaoh was around 6 feet and 6 inches tall. The average height of a human male during that time was more like 5 feet and 6 inches. So to the people around him, Sanakht would have appeared to be a giant. Even Ramses II, who history records as being tall, only reached 5 feet and 9 inches. Analysis of the pharaoh's bones has confirmed that he had giganticism, and so would have appeared even larger than he was. He's the earliest known human to have had this medical condition. Might all the other contemporary accounts of giants from the era have referred to people with giganticism too? Or were there other giants to be found in ancient times aside from this towering king? Italian cuisine is considered to be among the finest in the world and is often cooked and served with lashings of olive oil. How long have Italians been cooking with olive oil? Well, based on this discovery from 2018, we can say it's been at least 4,000 years. Traces of the substance have been found inside this curious-looking egg-shaped ceramic jar, covered in starfish-like designs. It was found at the archaeological site of Castelluccio in Sicily, along with two other ancient vessels that have also been found to contain traces of the same liquid. The design of the jar is typical of the kind of Sicilian tableware that existed in the homes of people who lived during the Bronze Age. It's always been known that the tradition of using olive oil in cookery dates back thousands of years in Italy. But until these vessels were discovered, it was believed to have begun around 700 years later. It looks like they stored it in enormous quantities. This vase is three and a half feet tall, so presuming it was filled to the brim, it would have contained enough to keep a family going for quite some time. New York is one of the most advanced modern cities in the world, but most of its residents don't know that they're walking on top of history every time they travel through it. In November 2015, a remarkable discovery was announced by archaeologists, who'd found a series of secret burial vaults directly below Washington Square Park. The archaeologists were called in after the vaults were accidentally disturbed by construction workers, who'd arrived at the site to upgrade water mains. When unknown graves are discovered, they're usually several centuries old. But these coffins appear to be far more recent. Based on their design, they're likely to have been buried during the 19th century. Somewhat gruesomely, they appear to have been disturbed at some point in the past, possibly during the original installation of the water mains a little over 100 years ago. Many of the coffins are broken, with disarticulated bones spreading out across the ground. It now seems that the vaults are part of what was once a church cemetery. Quite how the existence of a church cemetery was forgotten about so quickly is unknown, but the remains will now be reinterred somewhere more suitable. The Vikings are often represented as a warrior race, but there was more to them than that. They were skilled warriors but they were also adept navigators and talented sailors, reaching the North American continent long before any other Europeans did. They also liked to keep things from the lands and people they encountered, sometimes by pillaging them and sometimes through trade. We wonder how this Viking warrior came into possession of the Islamic coins he was buried with. The discovery was made at a Viking burial site in Trondheim, Norway in early 2015. Archaeologists originally believed they'd found a fairly typical Viking grave, containing the skeleton of a warrior buried with his sword and shield. But that changed when they found a small leather bag containing the out-of-place coins. Tests carried out on the grave suggest he was buried somewhere around the year 950. Historians believe there are only two ways he could have come across the coins. He might have traveled east to Holmgard, which is part of Russia today, or he might have traveled south to Spain. 
Spain was conquered by Arabs during the 8th century, but Vikings arrived and did battle with them 100 years later. There's no polite way to describe our next discovery, so we're just going to come right out and say it. It's an ancient stone statue of a penis. The massive phallus, standing two feet high, was found buried at a site in Sweden that must presumably once have been used for fertility rituals during the Bronze Age. The unlikely and surprisingly detailed statue was unknown until its accidental discovery as an area in Rollsbow was being assessed for possible construction work. The block was thought to be a paving stone when it was found half buried, but its true nature quickly became apparent after it was turned over. Further investigations revealed the presence of burned animal bones close to the statue, implying that it might have been a focal point for fertility rituals that involved sacrifices being made. The design of the sculpture suggests that it was already vaguely phallus-shaped when it was found by the Bronze Age fertility cult who discovered it, but they then enhanced the shape by working on it with tools. The presence of the stone might even be the reason why the site was chosen for its purpose. After discovering this, the archaeologists have a hard act to follow. About 14,000 years ago, a family of humans crawled through a dark, cold, wet cave in northern Italy. And we know that because we found their handprints and footprints in May 2019. The narrow cave's low ceiling would have required anyone who passed through it to crawl, thus explaining the handprints and providing the earliest ever evidence of humans crawling through cramped spaces to get from one place to another. Based on burned bundles of pine sticks that have also been found along the way in Grotta della Basura, it appears that they used flaming torches to light their way. Analysis of the size of the prints has allowed experts to provide approximate dates for the family. There were two adults in their late 20s or early 30s, a 10-year-old, a 6-year-old, and a 3-year-old, all of whom were probably on the move in search of shelter. Their journey took them through a small pond and across a cluster of stalagmites, so it wouldn't have been an easy trip to make. We hope that whatever they found at the end of their long walk made the experience worthwhile. In 2017, medical experts studying a 400-year-old South Korean mummy were startled to discover that it contained a gastronomical lesson from history. Eating raw, untreated fish can be a very, very bad idea. The internal organs of the mummy were preserved so well that scientists were able to detect the presence of an abscess on his liver, and inside the abscess, a nest of perfectly mummified liver fluke eggs. Based on what we know about the diets of people who lived in this part of the world at the time, it's highly likely that he got the troublesome infection by eating raw crabs and crayfish. Cooking crabs and crayfish thoroughly kills off any such infection, but if they're eaten raw, they can insist inside your intestines and release larvae, moving through your body until they eventually reach your lungs and grow into full-sized worms. The team behind the study doesn't believe that the infection is what ultimately cost him his life but it probably would have been uncomfortable, not to mention socially embarrassing. For many years, we've been taught that while the tomb of Tutankhamun might be impressive, the boy king himself was a sick and feeble figure who had an unremarkable reign and passed away without ever achieving anything. That might not actually be true. In 2018, a team from England's University of Northampton worked with an American television crew to perform a new study on the pharaoh's 3,000-year-old leather war armor and found signs of battle damage. That implies that far from being the pacifist philosopher he's so often portrayed as, Tutankhamun might have led his soldiers into battle, despite his tender age and seemingly slender frame. Even with this new information, we're still at a loss to understand how the overlapping leather scales of the armor were made. The ancient method for its manufacture has been lost to time, and all attempts to recreate it using modern techniques have failed. Tutankhamun was 9 when he became pharaoh, and around 29 when he passed away. What he did with his life during those short years might now need to be reassessed. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching, and see you soon!